Hello everyone, my name is Scott Hodgden and I am a Senior Technical Marketing Engineer in the Enterprise Networking and Cloud Group in Cisco Systems. In the Cisco SD Access channel, we share with you features and technologies of the Cisco SD Access solution and show you how to enable them. Cisco SD Access is a crucial part of Cisco's Zero Trust solution, providing automated, dynamic, multi-tier segmentation for user, device, and application traffic. Cisco SD Access automates user policy so organizations can ensure the appropriate access control and application experience are set for any user or device to any application, user, or device across the network. This is accomplished with a single network fabric across LAN and WLAN, which creates a consistent user experience anywhere without compromising on security. Today, I am going to talk about the Fabric Zones capability introduced in SD Access version 2.2.3. Since Fabric Zones are just a DNA center construct, there is no iOS XE requirement for Fabric Zones, although we always recommend that you follow the SD Access compatibility matrix on Cisco.com. You can find a link to the SD Access compatibility matrix in the information below the video. The first thing I usually ask myself when looking at something new is, why was this new capability introduced? From a manageability perspective, Fabric Zones allow customers who have large-scale deployments of Fabric Edge nodes in a single Fabric site to manage their network based on smaller locations or zones, such as buildings or floors. To improve network security, Fabric Zones provide more granular control of virtual network and IP pool provisioning within a site. For example, if a third party is physically located on site, the Fabric Zones option would prevent that third party's virtual networks and subnets from having access across the rest of the Fabric site. Finally, as scale increases within a site, performance can sometimes become a challenge. By using Fabric Zones, customers experience reduced provisioning time across the Fabric Edge nodes of a large-scale deployment. Here we see a site and how it might be partitioned into three separate Fabric Zones. Notice that some zones contain common virtual networks, such as VN Blue in Zones 1 and 3, while some VNs are limited to just a single Fabric Zone, such as VN Green in Zone 2. Also notice that the subnets, or IP pools, for the virtual networks can exist across multiple zones as long as that virtual network hosting that IP pool exists across multiple zones. Another option with Fabric Zones is to have a single virtual network spread across multiple zones but with different subnets in each zone. It is also possible to have the same subnet in a zone and the main Fabric site such as shown here with subnet 192.168.1 and .2 in their own zones as well as the main site. Also as shown here, notice there are not borders, control planes, or wireless controllers in the zones. Fabric zones will contain only fabric edge nodes and extended nodes connected to those fabric edge nodes. Those extended nodes can be classic extended nodes or policy extended nodes. Now let's have a look at how Fabric Zones are enabled. Now that we've seen an overview of Fabric Zones, let's see how we can enable Fabric Zones in two different use cases. The first use case will be enabling Fabric Zones in an existing site and limiting where certain users can connect to the network. The second use case will be building a new Fabric site using Fabric Zones from the beginning. So let's have a look at that first use case. We'll come here to provision and fabric sites. And we'll see that we already have a single fabric site in place, SD02. And we'll take a look at this fabric site really quickly. We can see that we've got three uh, devices in the site. We've got this transit control plane we're not going to use here. If we look at host onboarding, I've got a few virtual networks here, two user created virtual networks with Corp and IoT. I've got my infra VN, which is always there. Uh, and then on the floor devices here, I can see that I've also got Corp IoT and Infra. And if I look at the infrastructure for floor one, that's where DC-FE is. If I look at floor two, that's where DCM-SW is. Host onboarding, I've also got uh, the Infra VN and IoT and Corp. So let's say something comes along where 
we decide that we don't want the IoT devices on floor two and we don't want the corp devices on floor number one, right? So what we can do is we can come in here and we can say, well, let's create a fabric zone or edit fabric zone. And in this case, I could do it at the building level, but I wanna have the floors be separate, not, not the building be one thing, right? So I'm gonna go here for now and I'm gonna select floor one and floor two and I'm gonna say next. Now remember that fabric zones are a DNA center construct. There's nothing configured on the switches that say, you know, this one's in zone one, this one's in zone two, etc. cetera. Uh, this is purely done in DNA center to control where we can deploy the virtual networks and IP pools related to those virtual networks. So if I come back to the fabric site details here, I can see now I have two zones in SD02. And if I click on this again, I'll see this little FZ designation over here to the side. And you'll notice that the devices here are now grayed out at the top level site, um, at the top site level. And if I click on floor one, it'll show me as my fabric node there. If I click on floor two, it'll show the fabric node there. So we'll look at floor one, uh, because on floor one, let's say I only want IoT devices, right? So if I come back to host onboarding, I can see my virtual networks. Now notice that I no longer have uh, my infra VN here, so I, I don't really need that on the edge nodes anyway, usually. Um, but uh, I can see here that I've got corp and IoT, and I want to get rid of corp, right? I don't want corp to be there anymore. But before we do that, let's have a look at the, the before situation so that we can see what it looks like after. So we'll run a few commands here. And the first one we're going to do is show run section lisp. And what you can see here is you can see that I've got two virtual networks or in lisp terms IIDs. Instance ID 4100 is related to the VRF IoT and I have a database mapping with that subnet in there. That's the IP pool that's in that VN. And then I have a second instance ID uh, which is corp, which has that subnet in there. And now if I also run a show run section VLAN, I will see that I have two SVIs, uh, 300, which maps to IoT with the Anycast gateway, the default gateway there, so that users and devices can connect uh, into that VN. And then I also have the same uh, SVI 400 with the appropriate Anycast gateway for those users and devices. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go into the host onboarding area for this site and we're going to say, well, again, I don't want the corp information here. So I'm going to select corp and I'm going to go to the corp pool and I'm going to delete that pool and I'm going to say OK and I'm going to say deploy and apply and while that's doing that, we can go ahead and we can just remove this VN from the host onboarding screen for, um, for this particular uh, device, right? or this particular floor, I should say. So now if I come back here and I do those same commands, I can say run command, I can say show run section lisp. You'll now notice that I no longer have the corp information here, right? I still have my instance ID 4100. I still have my database mapping for that subnet. I still have the VN. So the VN is still here. Instance ID 4099 VRF Corp is still here because I might come along and re-add it in the future. And it exists at the overall site level. But since I don't have a database, uh, an instance ID set up as part of the list map system here, and since I no longer have a an SVI, uh, as we'll see in a second here, users and devices that might want to connect to Corp no longer have the ability to do so because they don't have a default gateway here. There's no VLAN that's associated with Corp any longer, right? It was VLAN 400 and there's no SVI for that. So even though somebody might manage to plug into this switch, this edge node, they would not be able to go anywhere. So they're effectively shut out from the network. Right, so in some use cases where I might have uh, users from a third party or a contractor or some other organization that sits full time in my infrastructure, or just certain departments that don't want to have their users and devices uh, migrating around, you know, moving around the network, 
Um, the zones capability allows us to go in and be granular and control what we can do where, right? So I just wanted to come here and do the same here. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing, sorry. Um, in host onboarding, I can now remove IoT from this site. And just to be, you know, complete about it, we'll do that. Just to show that we can indeed now control at each of the uh, zones exactly what's put in there. And if we go back then to the higher level, uh, highest level of the site, you'll still notice Corp is still there, IoT is still there because they still have to exist at the top site level. So that's how you can go in and, and update an existing site with fabric zones. But what if I wanted to build a new site from scratch and use zones at that point? So here I can go into create fabric sites and fabric zones. There's a workflow separately in the hamburger menu that you can do this as well, but this brings you to that same workflow. So we'll say, let's do it. And now I'm gonna choose the San Jose uh, branch here. So I'm not gonna do the whole site. I'm gonna build my site at this level. And I now I'm gonna say next. I'll just leave that wired endpoint data collection there. I'm going to say no uh, authentication for lab purposes. This is fine. Obviously, in a real environment, you might have closed auth or open auth or low impact or something like that. Now, I'm going to select set up fabric zones now, and it's going to be very similar to what we just did, right? Because here I've got San Jose. I could now set it up here at the two floors. I say next, and I say deploy. And so instead of having to go in after the fact and set this up, now from the very beginning of the site, I can view these site details and I can see that I've got a site built with two zones already. Now, I haven't built the actual fabric yet, right? So I would still have to go in and enable my borders and control planes and edges. But when I enable these edges here, FE1 and FE2, since each one is in a different zone, once again, at that point, I can then go in ahead and control which of the subnets, which of the VNs are available uh, on those particular uh, devices. Because currently, I don't have anything here at the top level, right? So I'd have to go and add all that as well. So hopefully this gave you a good idea of how we can both change an existing site to create fabric zones, or how we can go ahead and create a site from scratch, adding zones at the beginning. And remember that zones exist at various different levels of the hierarchy. You can do a building level zone, or you can do floor level zones. The thing that's tricky is if you want to add devices after the fact, then you have to play around with the hierarchy. You might have to move devices around a little bit within that. Uh, but you know we do have the ability to be very flexible with the zone feature. And I think you'll see more development and more flexibility coming with this uh, in future releases of DNA Center. So hopefully this was very good uh, and informative for you. Uh, I thank you a lot for uh, watching. Please remember to uh, subscribe and like and have a great day.